All right. So in this video, I'm going to talk about two things. One is cation formation. One is anion formation. How they are formed um, visually. Okay. So let's concentrate. Look at the cation. Now, how do cation formation? How, how, how the cation form? We want to first ask the question is which case will have been easier to get full shell? Now, what I mean by full shell is they follow the octet rule, meaning like um, all the electrons want to get a mass electron in order to get to noble gas state. Okay, so they want to get full shell because they want to get stable. Um, there are two, ele two elements that are not following the octet rule, which is hydrogen and helium. Okay, they only need two electrons. The valence electron to get full shell, but everything else, like uh, element 1 to 20, they all follow octet rule. That means they want to get full shell, a valence electron. So, which case here will have been easier to get full shell? So, let's look it up. Um, sodium, they are both sodium. Sodium atom, sodium atom. Now, because they atom, they both start with the same number of protons as the electron. So, 11 protons, 11 electron. If you draw the bow diagram for both of them, all right, they should have the same bow diagram. It's 2, 8, 1. Right? 2, 8, 1. So, that means they both also have one valence electron. Now, since they need to follow octet rule, that means they want to get eight valence electrons to get full shell because they want to get to noble gas. They want to get eight valence electrons. I always remember octet will meaning A. So how do they get uh, to get A mass electron full shell? There are two critical questions you want to ask yourself always. Lose how many electron and gain how many electron? Lose how many electron and gain how many electron? And then you compare the two cases, which case will take place easier. So let's look up this way. I have one mass electron. So the first question is, hey, I can lose electron, but lose how many? So I can, since I have one mass electron, easiest thing to do is just lose one electron. If you lose one electron, that means the period three, the third shell will be disappear. All right, if the third shell disappear, I will only have the first and the second shell. Now, if you look it up, the second shell now become the outside outside. The second shell have a valence electron, so meaning that this case will be full shell because the second period only need a valence electron. Now, since the third shell is gone because the one electron is gone, then the second shell become the outside. So, this case I will get full shell. That's the first situation. Now, second situation is I'm not going to lose this electron. I keep this, but instead I'm going to gain seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why I want to get seven? Because I have one here. If I gain seven, I will get eight valence electron. Remember, we need to follow octet rule. Mean I want to get eight valence electron. Now, while I want to get eight because this is the third shell, I want to get eight. Now. Two critical questions, lose how many electrons and gain how many electrons. So lose one electron, gain seven electrons, which case will happen easier? Of course, will be this case, because I just need to lose one electron, I'm done. But gain seven electrons, you have to gain, oh, seven times. You have to move seven times, which is like take more energy. But lose one, I just lose one electron. So the right-hand side case will not happen. Instead, the left case will happen. So I'm going to lose one electron. I'm going to lose the outside shell. So instead of three shell, I will have two shell. Look it up. My proton is in the middle of the nucleus, so I did not change my proton. So my proton is still an 11 proton. But since I lose one electron, instead of 11 electron, I will only have 10 electron. And I only have two shell, 10 electron. Okay. Now, you want to look it up. Hey, 11 proton, 10 electron. Which one has more? Then that will be the winner. Since proton has more, I would say the proton is a winner. If proton is a winner, meaning that it's a positive charge, the winner take care of the charge. The winner's proton then will be positive charge. Now, positive what? You have two cases you can think. Either you want to think about, hey, how many electron lose this number? This number, how many electrons involved, will be the charge. Oh, because it's a one electron here, that will be plus one charge. Or you can think about what is the difference between 11 and 10. Uh, the difference between 11 and 10 is one. Then you can say that it's one plus one charge. Okay. Now again, why is the plus charge? It's because proton is the winner, based on the fact that proton has more. So plus one charge. Now because the plus one charge is a positive 
uh, chart. So that why that's why we call cat ion. Now, how do I know it's cat ion? Because positive, and you see the T here. They look positive and T. They look the same. So plus one charge cat ion. And then when we write the charge on the atom, we write N A should be Na plus 1, okay? This one is plus 1 charge. Here will be Na plus 1, okay? So the way that you write will be opposite. This is a plus 1 charge. This this will be a plus 1 charge. This will be 1 plus, I'm sorry. This is a plus 1 charge. This will be 1 plus. But on the ion, like on the element, we don't write the 1. We just keep it Na plus, okay? That's just a cat ion. Now, the next thing is anion. Now, same question, which case will happen easier to get pushed up. So we have oxygen atom, oxygen atom, a proton, a electron. When we draw the bow diagram, we will have two and six. So that's A. So since I have six valence electrons, you always ask yourself, I have two critical questions, is lose how many electrons and gain how many electrons? Okay, it's always lose and gain, but lose how many and gain how many? You always ask yourself, how many? Okay, now here, because I have six electrons, the first situation is I just lose all six. So lose all six electrons. Now when the six electron is gone, second shell is gone, then I only have period one. Now period one, it has two electrons. Oh, is it full shell? Yes, it is full shell because period one, maximum I can only fit two. You see, look, this, the question is, which case will happen easier to get full shell? I did not say which case will happen easier to get a valence electron. I say full shell. So period one is still full shell because when the six electron is gone, period two is gone, uh, period one only needs two electrons. So in this case, full shell. Second situation is instead of getting, instead of losing six, I will gain two. Gain two here will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This case, I will get a electron, full shell. Now, lose six electron, gain two electron. Which case will happen easier? Of course, is gain two electron because it takes less energy. So this case will not happen, but then I will gain two electron. So since gain electron, two electron, I keep my proton AP plus, but then electron instead of A, I get 10 E minus. So I'm going to use the X to represent the new electron that I add, okay? And a proton, 10 electron, which is the winner, of course, is the electron. Electron is the winner, that's why it's minus two. Minus, minus charge. Or why how do you know it's gain how do you know it's negative charge? Because you gain electron. You gain you get more electron, that would be negative. Negative one. Again, you have two uh, ways you can see. Either you look up this number, oh two, that will be two electron. Or you can think, oh, what's the difference between A and 10? The difference between A and 10 is 2, then minus 2 charge. Because the negative charge, that's why it's an ion charge. And then you can see that you write down minus 2 charge, but you will write O2 minus. See, the way that they write is opposite. You will get more familiar with minus 2 charge and O2 minus.